we'll be taking a look at one of the most important components of DIY robotics that is a servo motor we will be explaining what a servo motor is how a servo motor works how to drive a servo motor and i'll be showing you how you can incorporate servo motors when you are creating your own robots but don't worry guys we'll be keeping it really simple we will be explaining everything in simple english so that everyone will be able to understand it by the end of this video you should be having a really good understanding of what a servo motor is it's working how we can drive it and you should be having enough knowledge to start making your own robots using servo motors so if you have any doubts make sure you ask it in the comments down below also if you like this video make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome tutorials so let's get started okay guys this is a simple diy servo motors these kind of motors are usually used when we are making robotics projects like diy robotic arms or when we are making our own diy aircrafts using arduino raspberry pi or other microcontrollers these kind of motors are usually used in cases where we need to move or push an object in a more precise manner a servo motor is actually similar to a dc motor well actually there is a dc motor inside the servo motor we'll come to that in a minute but the difference is that using certain control signals we can move or push an object that is attached to the servo motor to specific angles so first take a look at the difference between a dc motor and a servo motor a servo motor is actually a dc motor with some additional control circuits in the case of a dc motor the rotation is usually continuous right it can move either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction but the movement is usually continuous but in the case of a servo motor the movement is usually limited to plus or minus 90 degree a total of 180 degree but usually plus 90 degree or minus 90 degree this is actually the movement range of a dc servo motor but yes modifications can be done on these servo motors to make this movement continuous but i am talking about the servo motors that we usually use for our diy projects another difference is unlike dc motor that have two terminals right here the terminal a and terminal b for supplying power and controlling it in the case of a servo motor we actually have three terminals one for the ground one for the input power that is usually 5 volt and then we have another terminal where we connect the control signal this is the signal that determines the angle of rotation and that determines the angle with which the object that is attached to the servo motor moves now that you know the difference between a dc motor and a servo motor let's take a look at the inner working of a servo motor and how it works and how we can use them to move objects in specific angles now like i mentioned earlier it has a simple circuit that mainly consists of an error detection circuit or error detection amplifier and a position detector for detecting the position we usually use a potentiometer the error detection amplifier is basically a comparator which will compare the input signal as well as the output from the potentiometer then the comparator will generate a third signal or a voltage which is called an error signal which is amplified and then fed to the motor which is actually the voltage that drives the motor this third signal will be generated as long as there is a difference between the input signal that we provide or the control signal and the potentiometer position detector for example let's say the motor is in zero degree position and it can move plus or minus 90 degrees the voltage generated by the sharp position detector at this point will be equivalent to the voltage generated at zero degree right now when we provide a control signal to move the servo motor shaft to 90 degree there will be an error signal generated by the error detection circuit why because the control signal voltage is equivalent to the voltage at 90 degree but the position detector voltage is the voltage at zero degree so the amplified error signal causes the motor to start moving until the position detector says the angle is 90 degree at this point no more error signal will be generated so the motion stops now the input control signal that we provide is usually in the form of pulse width modulated signals or pwm signals that means the shaft of the motor will be rotated based on the pulse width of the signal that we provide and this varies from motor to motor 
In most cases, for example, if we provide a signal with pulse width equal to 1.5 millisecond, the shaft of the servo motor will be moving 90 degree. And if we provide a pulse width modulated signal less than 1.5 milliseconds, it will be turning to an angle less than 90 degree. And if we provide a pulse width signal greater than 1.5 milliseconds, it will be turning to an angle greater than 90 degree. Now at this point, I would like to give you a small tip that could save you a lot of money. When you are about to buy a servo motor for your project, you should always keep in mind that not all the servo motors are the same. The specifications are different for different motors. For example, some motors can be driven by 5 volts, some requires 9 volts, some, requires, some can be driven simply by providing 3.3 volt. And also for some motors, the pulse width modulated signal range that can be provided might be different. And also the torque requirement might be different and also the weight of the motor will be different. So you should be considering all these things before you buy a motor for your project. So before adding the components to your circuit and designing the final project, it's always a good idea to have a good knowledge of the components such as specifications, availability as well as the price. For that, I would recommend this free site called Octopart. Octopart is an amazing electronic component search engine. You can use Octopart to get all details such as distributor, pricing, availability, etc. You can also use Octopart to find the components that meet your requirement. You can even purchase the component by simply clicking the link here itself. It's a free solution for most of your problems and you will get everything in one place. So this is also going to be really interesting for you guys. So make sure you check it out. There are so many different ways by which we can provide pulse width modulated signals to control a servo motor. In order to generate these pulse width modulated signals, we can use simple circuits using 555 timer IC or we can generate signals using microcontrollers like Arduino. We can create our own custom Arduino boards with servo motor drivers and use it for our projects. It's very easy to create our own PCBs for our projects using Atom PCB Designer. We have detailed playlists where we can explain how to create our own PCB step by step for beginners. Atom is a PCB designer that can be used to create simple PCBs for hobby projects or complex and multi-layer PCBs for industrial use. If you are a DIY electronics enthusiast, you are gonna really love it. Altium subscription includes Altium 365 which lets you design, share and manufacture your project everything in one place. Secure centralized cloud storage lets you share design and ideas with teammates or clients. Altium 365 lets you make fast and accurate decisions by providing real-time component data including lifecycle status, pricing and availability data from Octopart for millions of components. You can download and install the free trial version from the description down below. And if you are a student, you get 6 month full license absolutely free. So don't miss out. Now let's take a look at some of the applications of servo motors. Servo motors are workhorses of robotics. They help robots move their arms, legs and other parts with great accuracy. Servo motors are usually used in cars for tasks like controlling the position of the side mirrors, adjusting the angle of headlights and even in the engine throttles to regulate the speed. In DIY aeroplanes and drones, servo motors controls the flaps, ailerons and rudders and it helps us to steer and stabilize the aircraft. In factories, servo motors are usually used to control the movement of robotic arms and CNC machines. Check out the part 2 of this video where we explain and provide you step-by-step -step instructions to create your own pick and place robot using servo motors and a robotic arm. So if you have any doubts, make sure you ask it in the comments down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel and give a like if you like this video. So see you in the next video.